G'day nerds. So let's talk about calorimetry. Now we can have really simple calorimetry in a school lab, or we can have this beast, which is the Atlas calorimeter, um, and it's at CERN, and it's just, it's phenomenal. But it works on the same sort of principle, right? We're measuring energy changes, and that's what a calorimeter does. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the differences and strengths and limitations of different types of calorimeters. Now again, we're not going to talk about the CERN version <laughs> much more. Um, we're going to talk about the ones we'll use in a school or a university research environment. So this is your vocabulary for the day. If I just get you to pause the video, write this down, you'll have something to refer to as the lesson continues. So there are two, three types of two. There are three types of chemical systems. Um, this is how you'll tend to see them. Uh, we've got the open, closed, and isolated. Um, Open systems allow matter to leave and, or, or, or enter, and they also allow energy to leave and enter. A closed system allows only energy to leave. Matter is stopped from leaving. But an isolated system, like a thermos, is actually stuck, right? Like it is matter can't leave or enter, or nor can energy. Now, a perfectly isolated system almost doesn't exist, so we sort of go thereabouts is good enough. Now, one of the really early types of calorimeters you'll use is the can, beaker, or copper calorimeter. So a can calorimeter is used to measure the enthalpy change of combustion reactions in particular. But you can also use it to measure dissolution reactions and so forth. It's just there are other versions for that which are a bit more acceptable. Um, so it's particularly used for combustion and that's because the reaction itself, the chemical reaction we're measuring the energy change for, is happening ex... That was tough to say. It shouldn't have been. It's just happening. Is happening externally. Um, it measures the heat of combustion below, and heat released raises the temperature of the water, and the temperature change, delta T, is used to estimate the heat of reaction, which is... So heat of reaction is the energy released, or the energy from the reactants into the system, whereas the alternative that is enthalpy is the energy change within the bonds. But they both, in theory, come out to the same number. So we use the temperature change to estimate the heat of reaction, or enthalpy. And this is an open system. Um, it's strength, it's safe, and it's cost effective. But it's very limited. It's limited to combustion reactions. Much of the heat is lost to the environment, um, so that's going to drive our measured temperature change down. It's subject to environmental conditions, and therefore the values of the heat released are lower than the actual values. Then there's the coffee cup calorimeter. It's a classic one. Um, it's made from two coffee cups or two foam styrofoam cups, and we use it to measure the enthalpy of reaction from within. So the reaction occurs inside the vessel just here, and we see that this is attempting to insulate it from the external environment. Um, it's not suitable for combustion or very high heat because, well, you melt it. Um, insulation is still quite poor, so a lot of heat is lost to the environment. It's a closed system, not an isolated system. Uh, manual stirring can be uneven, which means the, hist the heat distribution may not be uniform, and this means we're going to have some accuracy issues. So let's look at the bomb calorimeter, the big daddy of them all. Now, the bomb calorimeter is a constant volume and constant pressure calorimeter that measures the enthalpy of combustion reactions or other reactions. The reaction occurs isolated inside the bomb cell just here. It's an isolated system, which means it's external from, so heat and energy don't leave. And you'll see this all sorts of things. It's got automatic stirrer. Um, it's, very, it's expensive and under high pressure, so that's actually a problem. We've got digital thermometers, which means it's more accurate than a thermometer stuck in there. Um, here, the reaction is isolated, and we're actually measuring the temperature change of the water surrounding it. All right, I hope that made a lot of sense. If you have any questions, pop in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with everything we're doing. And yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye now.